Hey guys, come for MC here again. Welcome to another edition of LBP Tutorials. Today I'm going to be talking about measurements and speed. I'm not going to get too far into things, um, but I'm going to talk a little bit about Little Big Planet units and how that's going to be useful when you're working with the editor. So first of all, Little Big Planet units. When I when I say that, I mean anytime you see a number associated with something like a length, a speed, something like that. And here you'll see that we have a length of 10 units. So what does that actually mean? Well, a unit in Little Big Planet can be defined as such. One small grid is 2.5 units. So that means that four small grids would be 10 units. So if you want to just remember something, just when you pull out a piece of material and it's going to be 4x4 four four small grids by default, that's just a 10x10 10 10 block in Little Big Planet. Now these numbers are also used in something like player sensors. So here we have a player sensor that says its maximum detection range is 12.5. That means that there's five 2.5 small grids. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 5 times 2.5 is 12.5. So that tells us how far the radius is on this player sensor. And you can see that white circular outline and it just barely touches the edge of this adjacent block here. Okay, so that's how units work and or that's how distance units work in Little Big Planet. And that's gonna be useful when we're talking about things like speed. So when you tweak a mover, you'll see that there's a speed associated with these tweak settings. Now this speed is defined as the number of little big planet units you go in one tenth of a second. So when you tweak a timer for example, and you set the smallest unit, that's one tenth of a second. So that one tenth of a second, when this mover gets up to speed, every one tenth of a second it'll go four units. Well, four units isn't really a nice even number in a little big planet, because remember 2.5 units is a small grid, so five units would be two small grids. So four is kind of an arbitrary number, but it's about how fast Sackboy moves, so that's why these movers are set up at that speed. So let's say we were to tweak this to a speed of 10. That would mean that every 0.1 seconds, every tenth of a second, this block here, once it got up to speed, it would move four small grids. So 0.1 second go, seconds goes by and one, two, three, four. It will have moved that far. Okay, so you don't really think in terms of that, but it allows you, if you want something to move at a specific speed, you know how far it needs to go, and you know how quickly you want it to get there, you can work out how fast you want to set your speed to. And that's the same for all of these uh, advanced movers, followers, and all that sort of thing. And again, you have to play with the, uh, the strength, acceleration, and deceleration settings to kind of get it up to speed. But that number tells you what its behavior will be when it is fully up to speed. Okay, well, I'm going to show you a really nice application of how accurate these things can be. Uh, I've set up a big grid, uh, let me just hide this. I've set up a big grid layout here, just a few blocks set up in big grid. And I'm going to use a single mover to allow a bl uh, block of hologram, uh, or it's sticker panel, but you could use hologram, to allow a block of sticker panel to move along this grid using just a mover and it's going to take player controls, player going to ride in it. So basically I'm going to set up a grid movement system. But first I want to talk about uh, frames in Little Big Planet. So when I say frames, I mean how long it takes for one for the game to update everything again. And it's a little bit of a, a technical term, but if you look at this wire here, how it lights up very quickly and then turns back off. For the amount of time that that's lit up, that is one little big planet frame. And there's 30 of them in every little in every second because little big planet runs at 30 frames per second. Um, and that's as quick as something can happen in little big planet. So I'm gonna set this this up here so that every every time it moves from one grid to the next, it's gonna do it in one frame. And so we have to figure out how fast I, I'm going to need to set my, in this case, advanced mover in order for that to happen in one frame. Okay, well, let's think about this. Do I want to set this? I know I want it to go one big grid, which is 10 units. 
So do I want to set this to 10? Well, remember, the speed 10 tells us how far this block, in this case, the mover is attached to this, how far this block will go in a tenth of a second. Okay, so a tenth of a second. Let's just play with that for a second. Let's just set this timer to a tenth of a second. Let's look at that. How many frames are in a tenth of a second? Well, you can do your math to figure it out, or you can just look at this timer, and you can see that there's kind of these vertical lines that are forming as this timer moves across. Hopefully you can see that in the recording. If not, you can definitely see it when you're editing in the game. There's actually three frames in every tenth of a second. So that means a tenth of a second, three frames have gone by. But I want something to happen in one frame. So I'm going to need this mover to move three times as fast. So I want you to digest that for a second. So if I were to let this block move for a whole tenth of a second, then it would move all the way across this whole one big grid space. But I'm not going to give it that much time. I'm going to give it third as much, a third as much time. So I'm going to make it move three times as fast, so 30. And I'll set up all this uh, deceleration, acceleration to 100%. And then I'm going to quickly set something up, and we'll see if what I've done is actually uh, going to work out. Okay, so I'm going to use the left stick input when I'm riding in this controllinator. I'm going to split it out. And then I'm going to use a little counter trick to, to make it so it turns on for one frame. You might have used this before for simulating uh, a one-shot uh, style pulse signal thing. We've talked about them quite a bit before, where you wire to a counter and then have it instantly reset. And then I'm going to combine the signals back together, which will feed into my advanced mover. So what's happening here is when I press the stick to the right, it's going to branch off to the positive in this uh, direction splitter, and it's going to split off to the bottom negative when I press to the left. And then those will be recombined into this advanced mover, which has a speed set to 30. So, let, oops. so let's see, if I touch the left stick, you'll see that it moves. And at that next frame that it updates, I have moved one grid space over. You can't really see too well those pulses going through there, but every time I hit uh, the, the left stick, it's going to either pulse this counter or this counter, which will turn on this advanced mover for one just one frame. And because the speed is set to 30, it will move 10 units in that one frame. And it does it pretty darn accurately. You'll see that even if I move around back and forth, I'm not deviating from that grid alignment there. OK, so what can we do with this to kind of extend it a little bit? Let's say I wanted to move in two dimensions. OK, well, I can just copy this exact same setup I've got here for the left sticks left and right, but instead use the up and down output. And then I'll, of course, combine this into the top of the advanced mover. That's the up and down input. And just so I have kind of something visually to play around with, I'll copy all these blocks and make myself a bigger grid here. Oops. Let's see. Okay, so let's see. I can move up and down, left and right, and I'm locked into this grid. Now, if you actually start kind of throwing your left stick around and just doing crazy things, you'll notice that, uh oh, I've gone off of the grid a little bit. Why has it done that when it seemed to be doing everything so accurately? Well, when, this, when you think about this speed on the advanced mover, this tells me how far it's going to go in the amount of time, in this case 0.1, or 0.1 seconds. But if I, press both the, if I press the stick diagonally up, that's going to send a signal to both the, the top and the side inputs of this advanced mover. And so it's going to move it, and I'm going to have to leave the grid for this, it's going to move that if I start about here, it's going to move it 10 units up this way. But 10 units isn't enough enough distance to get me all the way back to that center. You can think about it like this. If I rotate this block, let's see. If I rotate this block on its side, we know that's 10 units. We see that 10 units is not enough to get from one diagonal to the next diagonal. So that's why we end up going off-grid a little bit like that. There's a couple of ways we can fix it. 
one of the kind of simplest uh, ways of fixing it is to just make sure that um, that one of these has precedent over the other. So if I press left and up at the same time on my left stick, I'm just going to pick one that it's going to favor. And so uh, I'll choose that it's going to favor the left and right. And the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to detect if there's any left or right, or if there's any up and down signals. I'm going to looks like I'm going to favor the up and down. Yep. I'm going to favor the up and down motion of this uh, movement here. And I'm going to do that by just embedding some AND gates in before I recombine these two pulse signals here. The way that I'm going to do that is to just invert an OR gate up here. So that means that as long as there's no signal coming through here, this OR gate's going to be lit up, completing the second half of these AND gates. Now as soon as, as soon as I press up or down on the left stick, it's going to light one of these up. And there I lit it up and you would see that this wire would turn off for a second which would essentially lock us out from moving up and down. So let me just finish this back out and just wire this back up. Okay so now I've given precedent to the up and down. The up and down doesn't have any AND gates to go through before they're recombined but the left and right does and it's only allowed to go left and right as long as there is uh, no signal coming through either of the up and downs. So let's just play around with this. Oops. So I'm just going to go crazy again. And you'll see that it's not deviating from those grid spaces that I've set up. So I'm just moving the stick around as crazy as I can. Now if I hit a diagonal, it's always going to favor the up direction. Which is kind of... Uh, might not be desirable, but I can allow you to work out an alternative on your own. For now, it works pretty well. Uh, I've, I've locked my movements into this, this uh, grid pattern here. And so that's a really nice example of how understanding kind of what these units mean in Little Big Planet allow us to create something that might be a little, little more complicated to work with. Um, and then, of course, uh, you can have something other than sticker panel be the, the piece that moves around if you set up a follower system. Now the reason that we have to use a, a sticker panel or hologram here is that it has no mass and so when this, uh, this mover gets up to speed it doesn't have any sort of resistance to that and so it'll get up to speed and allow that movement to happen uh, instantaneously. If I were to try to do that with, uh, and I'll just show you an example, if I change this to Let's say stone. And try to do the same thing. It's going to get off a little bit over time. Just because that stone has some inertia that it's kind of working against. And you'll see that we've already got a little bit of a gap there. We're never going to get that gap with sticker panel or hologram. And so we can just set up our sticker panel or hologram. And then if we choose to, we make it invisible. And then we choose whatever we want the player to actually see. And let that just follow our piece of sticker panel around. So here, I've got that, in this case, a pinball. It's just following the sticker panel around. And I don't have to worry about any uh, craziness going on with the inertia of the pinball. Because all that pinball is doing is it's just following this tag that's on my sticker panel. So now I've got grid-based movement. It was pretty easy to set up just by understanding what those speeds are. Um, there's one last thing I could do to extend this. A little bit to extend this to lock myself into a grid, and I'll let you experiment with that on your own. I won't go through the whole process, but if you made it so, let me just quick. I'll just quickly show an example of what we can do. If I put up a sticker panel wall here. And of course, it's not going to actually prevent any collisions or anything like that. If I put up a wall, let's just, I'll just use that tag there, set it to red, and I'm going to specify that this is the left wall. Now, if I want it, so if this sticker panel piece is in contact with this now, left wall. I don't want it to be able to go left anymore. And I just have to figure out where left is. So here, 
There's my left and right output on the left stick. When it splits, left is negative, so it's down here. So left is going to be traveling through this wire here, and I'll just change the color so we can see it right, quite easily. So there's my left motion, and I'm just going to add one more condition to an AND gate. And if it didn't have an AND gate there, I would just add one. And I'll use an impact sensor. So if it's impacting that red left tag, then I don't want it to move. So as long as it's not, in this case, so I have to invert it, as long as it's not impacting, then I want it to move. Okay, so now, oops, get on there. Oh, be a pain in the butt. There, now if I hit, I'm hitting left on my, you can see that purple right there flashing. I'm hitting left, but it's not moving because that impact sensor has been disabled. Once I move away from the wall, you'll see that that impact sensor has lit up again, so I can move left, and then it'll prevent me from moving left again. So I've made virtual walls for my arena, and I would just have to copy that uh, to the bottom, top, and right sides using a similar method if I wanted to lock the player into that gridded region. Okay, so we've talked all about uh, movers and speed and distance and things like that. There's one thing I want to just mention in passing. I'll let you uh, work out the entirety of it on your own. But when you deal with anything with uh, rotation, so in this case I'll just set up a really quick example of something with rotation, and that's just going to be a motor bolt. Let's see, motor bolt. So these have units on them as well, and they mean they don't mean at all the same as what we deal with linearly. So when I set the speed, that tells me how many degrees this angle will or this uh, motor bolt will sweep out in one second. This is different from the linear stuff in that everything was in 0.1 seconds. This is actually how far it'll sweep or how many degrees it'll sweep out in one second. So if I set it to 360 degrees, I would anticipate that it would sweep out uh, a full circle, a full revolution, 360 degrees in one second. Let's just set up a timer to, to check, the, uh, to verify that that's actually the case. Let me pause, I'll reset all this. Let's just get the next one. Okay, so like I said, we're going to set this to one second. And then I'll make it instantly reset itself so it just keeps doing that. Okay, so we should see that this motor bolt will take that piece of cardboard around in one second. The same amount of time that it will take that timer to fill. And it looks like that's the case. Every time this piece of cardboard hits straight up and down, then that timer is filled. They just they match up. So we see that the speed for motor bolts and rotators and anything like that, uh, it tells you how many degrees in one second. So if you're trying to get precise motion out of that, you can, uh, you can think about that and play around with that uh, to be a bit more precise in your... Uh, settings. Okay, so it's a bit technical, but I do hope you guys learned something today. This was quite a difficult tutorial to set up. This is like my, my eighth take, so hopefully it wasn't too dull and boring. Uh, but once again, thanks for stopping by, guys, and I hope to see you soon. The tutorials will unleash not only exciting tools and objects, but knowledge and the deepest secrets of the cosmos.